What's up everybody? Today we are here in beautiful Prescott, Arizona. We're going over landscape photography filters. It's gonna be a basic guide, the types, the shapes, and how to use them. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna jump on the camera here. There's generally two different types of uh, photography filters. The first one is gonna be these round filters here. All they do is they just screw into the end of your lens. You can get ND filters, and we're gonna talk about the different types, ND and circular polarizer, but they just screw onto the end of your lens. You find out what thread size you need for your particular lens. You can order it on Amazon. I'm gonna link some down below here, and I'm gonna tell you guys more about them here in just a second. And these are more for guys who shoot video. Uh, it's really popular in filming. Helps you keep your shutter speed down when you're recording video. I really don't use those at all. What I have here is a landscape photography filter set. Comes with a filter holder, some adapters for all your different lenses and then several different filters so what i'm going to show you guys today is my kit what i use and how i use them uh, you have neutral density filters just like putting sunglasses over your lens what that does is allow you to manipulate your shutter speed so you know if you want long, longer shutter speeds to smooth out water to give that long silky smooth or you want to get the long exposures in the clouds show some movement in the clouds nd filters are the way to go i'm gonna take a shot with no filter on i'm going to show you guys the shutter speed i have with the water then i'm going to throw on a couple of nd filters and i'm going to show you guys what you can do with your shutter speed and how you can make your photos even more interesting. So I got here set up, I got no filter on, I just got the filter holder on. Right now at f5.6, one quarter of a second, ISO 64. I'm gonna take a shot, I'm gonna show you guys what this water looks like when I just have no filter on whatsoever, having a relatively fast shutter speed. You can see there's still ripples in the water. Now what I wanna do is I wanna smooth that out. So I'm gonna throw a six stop ND filter on and you're gonna watch what it does to my shutter speed. Now that I got the six stop on, my shutter speed has changed now to 25 seconds. I got it at F8, uh, 25 second shutter speed. Now look at what I'm doing to the water. So as you can see there now, it completely smooths out the water, gives it more of an ethereal look. Uh, I think it's way more interesting than having all those ripples in the water. You can do this with waterfalls. You can do this with waves. Um, now I find that shooting waterfalls and waves I don't want a super long shutter speed unless I'm going for that kind of look where all the water is flat, uh, you're making it all smooth. What I like with waves, you're going to see in this photo right here, I like about one third of a second. So it's, let's say you're shooting in the daytime, uh, it's too bright, you cannot get that one third of a second, then you want to slap an ND filter on, a six stop, a ten stop even, if you're shooting in the middle of the day for whatever reason, which you shouldn't be. but. You want to put a, a, an ND filter on so you can manipulate your shutter speed. You want long exposure clouds, you want a couple of minute exposure, you can even put a 10 stop on there and get, you know, 30 second up to even, I've done eight minute exposures before to completely smooth out the water, especially in oceans, it can provide a really, really cool look, very moody look. Now what you guys can see here is the sky is a bit brighter than the foreground. And it's kind of helped me out though because I got like a lot of clouds. I got some really heavy cloud cover, so it's not that bad. But if you're shooting into a sky that's really bright, even blown out, so what you can do is put on a graduated neutral density filter. Now it looks just like this right here. It starts off dark and gradually goes to bright. What that does, you can put it over the sky. So I'm gonna show you guys right here. You can see what it does to the sky. It's gonna darken that sky down, bring down the highlights a bit. And so that way you can bring down those highlights uh, it works really great. You can use them in combination. The reason why I love these kits is you can use them in combination. They're now, this one is a soft grad. They have medium and hard grad. Which means like if you have a really flat horizon like you're shooting at the ocean, you can use a hard grad, put it right at the horizon and really bring down those highlights. So I'm gonna show you guys now a shot with just the six stop ND filter on and then a six stop with this. I'm not gonna do any post processing to it. I'm just gonna show you guys flat right out of the camera. That way you guys can see the difference and when you shoot with without a graduated filter and with one. So here's a shot with just a six stop ND filter on and now this is a shot with the six stop ND filter plus the graduated neutral density filter on to bring in those clouds a little bit now in this particular scene I don't need the graduated neutral density filter because of the heavy cloud cover uh, I can capture everything without it but if you're shooting into a place like I said with a high dynamic range where you can't get the highlights and the shadows in the same you know image without blowing out one or the other if underexposing or overexposing then you want to use one of these graduated neutral density filters they come in handy and like i said there's a, a wide variety of different uses for them i've seen people invert them like if they're shooting a cityscape at night with the you know the bright lights of the cityscape and they want to get the clouds i've seen them uh you know turn them upside down and use them for that so there's a lot of really creative uses for them so now i'm going to show you guys the very last type of filter the circular polarizer 
What a circular polarizer does is it cuts the glare on water. That's the main reason why I use it is if you want to see underneath the water, you want to take off the glare, you know, shooting up really close, see the rocks underneath the water, especially in rivers. It takes the glare off of rocks or anything shiny reflective. It can take all that away. Another use for this circular polarizer filter is to saturate your colors. I can blue the sky more. It can bring clarity into your clouds. If you're in a wooded area, it can make your greens more saturated. So it can really saturate those colors. I don't ever use it for that. Uh, I just shoot and then I'll do something in post-processing with the colors and I'll, I'll you know, work with them in post-processing. I normally don't use a circular polarizer other than cutting the glare off the water. All right, so you guys can see here, when I turn the polarizer, it's gonna, there you go, so you got that. So you got the glare. Now as I turn it, it's gonna remove that glare. To me, there's so many different ways and combinations you can use these filters to really bring out your photography, to really improve it. Like I said, the best thing to do is grab a couple, a six stop, a 10 stop, a, a circular polarizer. If you can afford something like this, now these are a bit expensive, but if you can afford something like this, it will really bring your photography to the next level. Now, if you're just getting into landscape photography and you wanna try and maybe try out some filters, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link below some budget filters, some screw in budget filters you can do to just screw in the type of your lens. You can maybe get a six or a 10 stop. Now make sure when you purchase one of these that when you click on the link below, you make sure that whatever lens you have, you have the right filter size for it. So sometimes it could be a 72 millimeter or a 77. I believe this one's an 82. Uh, they're all different types and sizes. So make sure when you buy it, you get the right type and you get the right size. Um, like I said, try a six stop, see what you can do. You can mess around with your shutter speeds. If you want to get serious about it though, if you want to get serious about landscape photography and filters, I would highly recommend getting a kit like this where you can interchange filters, you can combine filters. It is the absolute best way to go. They are expensive. You can buy pieces at a time or you can buy full kits. Now I have this giant filter set and it's an extra big one. It's 150 millimeters. Most of the time you're gonna get something with these kind of lenses, you're gonna get a 100 millimeter set. But because I shoot this lens with this giant bulbous front end on it, I have to get these giant filters. Now this is my favorite lens. I use this so much. So if you shoot the Nikon 14 to 24 or the Tamron 15 to 30, that's got this giant front end element on it, you're gonna to wanna to get the 150 millimeter set. Uh, Benro has them, Nisi has them, Lee has them. They all have these big filter sets. So all it does is, the reason why I love this Nisi filter holder, slides right over the top, screw it down, and filters slide in just like this. This, this screws on the end of the lens, just like this. Slide it right over the top, and screws down so I can use a couple of different filter adapters for my different lenses and still use the same filter holder, much cheaper than buying a bunch of different filters for each lens and each lens size. So that's why I prefer having the landscape photography kit like this than having the screw in type. So now I'll link all this stuff in the description below. I'm not sponsored by Benro in any way, even though I use all their tripods, I use their filters because I just love the products. I'm not sponsored by them. Guys, that's gonna be it. Everything will be in the links below. If you guys have any questions about filters at all, leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. And like always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.